Alright, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove one of my favorite facts in linear algebra. Namely, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues of a linear transformation are automatically linear independent. And this is pretty amazing because essentially if you put a bunch of vectors in a set, then it's not necessarily true that that set is linearly independent. But if you have eigenvectors for distinct eigenvalues, then it is true. Your new set is linearly independent. So here's the theorem that I'll prove today. Namely, if um, lambda 1 up to lambda n are distinct eigenvalues. Distinguish, no, distinct eigenvalues of T, where T is a linear transformation from a vector space to itself, so it doesn't even have to be infinite dimensional, of T um, and v1 up to vn are the corresponding eigenvectors on the eigenvectors and I'd like to remind you that by convention eigenvectors are non-zero otherwise this proof wouldn't quite be true because a set with zero is linearly independent. So then, V1 up to Vn is linearly independent. And you, I'm sure you have used this fact before in elementary linear algebra courses without even knowing why it's true. So let me just illustrate this. And by the way, everything I see about linear transformations here also works for matrices. So suppose A is a matrix. Let me see one, which one did I have? One, one, four, one. Then you can calculate the eigenvalues. It turns out the eigenvalues are minus one and three. So lambda one is minus one, lambda two is three. And suppose you find course an eigenvector. And it turns out an eigenvector corresponding to minus 1, it's I think 1 minus 2. And an eigenvector corresponding to 3 is just 1, 2. So you can check that, and I have done a video on finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a 2 by 2 matrix. And here's the cool thing what does it say? If you put v1 and v2 together in a set, then that set automatically is linearly independent. So 1 minus 2 and 1, 2 is linearly independent. And in particular, because we have a linearly independent subset of R2, this automatically becomes a basis for R2. Which also shows that if you have a matrix in this case, a 2 by 2 matrix with two distinct eigenvalues, then it's automatically diagonalizable, which is very beautiful. And even more beautiful is the proof of this theorem. So yeah, write this down in case you're taking notes. And let me prove this. And the proof you'll see is by a very nice induction. So let's do induction on n where n is the number of distinct eigenvalues, or eigenvectors in this case. So proof. So induction on n. So let Pn be the proposition. Be that prop. This one. If you have distinct eigenvalues of t and you have the corresponding eigenvectors, then this set is linearly independent. And you know, it's all about the base. So let's do the base case. So suppose n is 1, which means suppose t has one eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenvector. So suppose t has eigenvalue.
lambda 1 and let v1 v1 be a corresponding eigenvector eigenvector and again I would like to remind you eigenvectors here are non-zero and in particular what about that set well then v1 because it's a set of a non-zero vector it's automatically linearly independent So, in particular, there's nothing really to prove here. It has nothing to do with an eigenvector, just the fact that if you have a set with a non-zero vector, then it's linearly independent. So, that was the, the base case. Now, let's do the inductive step. So, in other words, suppose this is true for n minus 1 vectors, and show that it's true for n vectors. So inductive step. So suppose Pn minus 1 is true. And then show Pn is true. So to show Pn is true, suppose lambda 1 up to lambda n are distinct eigenvalues of t and show that v1 up to vn is linearly independent. So suppose lambda 1 up to lambda n are distinct eigenvalues eigenvalues of t and v1 up to vn up to vn be the corresponding eigenvectors. Eigenvectors. And let's show that V1 up to Vn is linearly independent. Let's write that down and then um, let me erase at least the statement because we don't need it anymore. And by the way, I noticed something very funny actually yesterday about my um, eraser here because I keep erasing it, but I never saw the name of it. And now look actually what it's called. It's called Ghost Duster. Who you want to call Ghost Duster? Anyway. So with that said, let's prove you know, the inductive step. So how do you show something is linearly independent? Suppose a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n. It's a zero vector and show that a1 equals zero dot 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 a n equals zero. This will be a master equation because it turns out we will do two things to this equation. Uh, on the one hand, so far we've never used the fact that the vi's are eigenvectors of t. And now let's actually use this fact. So let's apply t to this equation. Apply t to this thing. Then what do we get? t of a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n equals t of 0. And because t is linear, a1 t of v1 plus dot 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 plus a n t of v n. t of 0 is just 0 because t is linear. And then by definition of an eigenvector, t v1 is lambda 1 v1. And then a n lambda n v n equals 0. So that's one equation that we get. And in fact, when I took linear algebra, I had that question on a midterm, and I was only able to go to that part, because so far it's just a part where you can just use the definitions and everything. The next part is a little bit trickier, because we know that the statement is true for v1 up to vn minus 1. 
because by induction hypothesis. But now we have this extra Vn. Let's see some way that we can cancel out Vn. Well, how can we cancel it out? Here we have lambda n Vn, and well, to cancel this out, we kind of need a lambda n. So now let's take this equation and multiply it by lambda n. So multiply this thing by lambda n. Then what we get is lambda n, a1 v1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n v n, equals lambda n times zero. And this becomes a1 lambda n v1, plus if you want a2 lambda n v2, plus a n lambda n v n, equals zero. And be especially careful, you know, the, those equations look very similar, but they're not quite the same, because in this equation, all the coefficients here are equal. All the lambda n's are in front of it, but here the lambdas vary in terms of which vector you have. Okay, so that's cool, and all we need to do is just subtract everything. So subtract this equation from this equation if you want to uh, 1 minus 2 or 2 minus 1, whichever you prefer. Then we get a1 lambda 1 minus lambda n v1. So if you sub do this minus this, a1 and v1 they factor out, and it goes all the way up to a n minus 1, lambda n minus 1 minus lambda n n minus 1. And what happens to those terms? Well, a n lambda n v n minus a n lambda n v n. So you get that this is 0. And this is very good because think about what this means. This means that we somehow get a non-trivial linear combination of v1 up to vn minus 1, which gives you a zero vector. But there is one thing we haven't used yet, which is the induction hypothesis. So now let's use our induction hypothesis to conclude that all those coefficients are zero. All right, so bye, because pn is true, because pn minus 1 is true. we get that v1 up to vn minus 1 is linearly independent, so all the coefficients here are 0. a1, lambda 1 minus lambda n equals 0, up to a n minus 1, lambda n minus 1 minus lambda n equals 0. I mean, now there might be a problem, because if I just give you random lambdas, they might be equal. And then we couldn't conclude that ai's are zero, because if this is zero, all we know that a1 times zero is zero. But that's trivial. And it's very important in math. If I give you an assumption, you have to use it. And in particular, because all those things are distinct, the lambda i are distinct, in other words, they're all different. We know that all those things are non-zero because nothing is equal to each other. So in particular, we can cancel everything out in this equation and you get a1 equals zero, da, 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 up to a n minus one equals zero. And what about a n? Well, not a problem, because we did have our equation, right? We had our original linear independence equation, plus from a n minus 1, v n minus 1, plus a n v n equals 0. But now, because all those coefficients vanish, what we're left with is a n v n equals 0. I really... NV, A N V N. <laughs> Bad pun today, but um, and because.
because eigenvectors are non-zero, we the only way a n e, v n equals zero is if a n equals zero. And then we are done. So we assume there's a non there's a linear combination of vectors that gives you zero, and we showed that all the coefficients are zero. So in particular, we can conclude that v1 up to vn is linearly independent, so pn is true. In other words, if you take eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues, they're automatically linearly independent. And it's a very beautiful proof, in my opinion, because uh, you just write the definition of linear independence. On the one hand, naturally, you just apply your linear transformation to it. On the other hand, there's this little trick where you multiply by lambda n, and then the rest just like flows out like butter, and everyone is happy and can go home. All right, I hope you liked this little video. If you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and to ring the bell. Thank you.